Hey guys, in today's lesson we're going to be talking about bearing capacity for foundation designs. Um, this is going to be a guide for, uh, it's going to be a kind of beginner's guide for geotechnical and civil engineers. And in this quick lesson, I'm going to be talking to you about an introduction. So very quickly, what is bearing capacity and what are foundation, uh, how are foundations designed? Then I'm going to show you some web software that's free to use, which you can use to actually do this Tazagi bearing capacity analysis. Um, and then finally, I'm going to dive into all the first principles stuff and explain more about the fundamentals. So you leave the lesson with a much deeper and better understanding of these calculations. So firstly, what is bearing capacity? So bearing capacity is a really important calculation that we need to do for designing foundations. It uses um, different mathematical formula and typically, uh, a lot of the time, we use something called Tazagi uh, bearing capacity analysis, which is a closed form calculation where there are a known number of parameters and inputs. And we can use these calculations to get our answers in terms of factor of safety and allowable bearing pressure, which the foundation can sustain. But there are other methods that you can use. You can use finite element analysis. Uh, but in today's uh, lesson, I'm just going to be talking to you about this Tazagi analysis. And you can see here some of the inputs to the different the inputs to the calculation. So you can use width, depth, things like this, and the Q, which is like the allowable force onto the foundation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you some free software, which basically can, you can run this Tazagi analysis um, on the on the web. So um, I want you to go over to calcforge.com. So it's www.calcforge.com. I'll put the link in the bio and I'll talk you through here how you can actually use this free software to run these calculations. So when you first open up this bearing capacity calculator page, you're going to see here um, some sort of preset like templates so you can get an idea of how the software works. Um, on the left, you have your foundation that you're designing. It will tell you what the permanent load is that you're applying. So this is like your long-term load, let's say, of the building, and then a variable load. So this could be like a load of uh, vehicles accessing the site, or it could be pedestrians, or it's some sort of varying load. And then below this, you have your different geological layers. So you have made ground and weathered rock. And all of this can be adjustable, and you can um, customize it to suit your project. So on the right, you can change your foundation type. So it can be circular or rectangular. I'll just leave it as rectangular for now. And you can change the le length and the width and the depth. So let's say I want this to actually be one meter depth. I can change this to one, click analyze, and we'll update our calculation. Um, again, it will like update the utilization and tell you if the results pass or not. You can also change the load here. So let's say I just want to change the permanent load. So I want to make this 1,500, so increasing it by 10. I can do that and I can rerun the analysis. And what you'll see here now is it's failing. So this force which I want to apply is not the, the ground um, below the foundation isn't strong enough basically to sustain this. And you see here it's 136% utilized. So it's 36% over the limit. If you imagine 100% is the limit in which it goes from pass to fail. I can also um, click here, advanced settings, and I can change some other stuff. So I can add a variable load. I can make the base so that it's not flat. I can make it so that this is angled, like 20 degrees, let's say. And you'll see here, I've started to slope the base and the utilization's got worse because it's sort of forcing the earth on one side to take more of the force than the other side. And I can also offset this load from the center point. So I could say, move it um, 0.5 meters offset. Uh, and again, this will, will make it worse because you're forcing more pressure onto one side of the foundation than the other. I'll just return this back to the center. I can also add groundwater, so I can consider groundwater in this calculation. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the geology, so I can actually edit the geology. So we've got two meters of made ground, we've got weathered rock. But let's say maybe I want to add another layer in here. Let's say I've just got one meter of this, and then I've got this custom custom group below that. I can actually then change these properties. I can change it to undrained or drained analysis. Um, undrained analysis will use different parameters. So we'll use the shear strength here rather than the drained cohesion. Um, but it's important that you 
uh, look into what the ground conditions are. If it's a sand or something that drains very quickly, it's probably going to be like drained analysis that you'll do because the water leaves the ground immediately and it becomes drained. But if it's a clay or something where the water, the pore pressure, the water is like trapped inside the material for longer, you might want to consider drained analysis as well. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about that in this in this uh, lesson. But it's important that you you know look into what the ground parameters should be and speak to a geotechnical engineer if you need to. Um, and again, I can then sort of reanalyze this with my new um, with my new geology. So I can click analyze again, and this will then show that custom layering uh, inside there as well. I can then basically go through a breakdown of what the results are really showing me. So I can see here a sort of summary, and it will also tell me what the worst case analysis is, which layer is it that's causing this um, this to fail, or what, which one's causing it to fail the most. If I click full calculation here, I'll actually see a breakdown for each one of the layers of geology. I'll see a breakdown here of what the results are for that layer. So made ground basically runs through these different design approaches. So this is using Eurocode 7. So here it's running different design approaches and combinations which are given in the Eurocode 7. So this is different combinations of factors of safety that are applied onto the loads and also onto the soil uh, strength parameters. And so for each one of these um, different cases, I'm basically running this to Zagi analysis. You'll see here these different things, NC, NQ. I'll explain a bit more about those. Um, but basically, these are different parameters that are given in Tazagi analysis um, in terms of the shape of the foundation and different conditions. Um, yeah, different conditions related to the soil. Um, and then basically you can go through the different layers. So you can see here weathered rock, you see the utilization. This is actually okay. This one's not, it's not failing in the rock. And also for the, this custom group we created, it's also not failing for that. The utilization's fine. So it's just the made ground in, even in case one, it's just at the limit. It's case two, it's this approach one, combination two, and design approach two where it's failing. But for Eurocode seven, you have to check all of these. I can then also download this as a full PDF report, so I can click this button and download this whole calculation. Um, uh, yeah, so that's basically everything I wanted to show you in terms of the software. Now on to the theory. Bearing capacity is the maximum pressure soil can support without failure. Geotechnical engineers use their understanding of bearing capacity to design systems to safely transfer the loading from structures into underlying soils. The loading produces compressive and shear forces in the soils. If the loads are large enough, the shear force induced in the soil will become higher than the shear strength in the soil, resulting in failure. There are three types of bearing capacity failures that can occur. One type of failure is punching shear. This is generally happens in loose sands, thin layers of strong soil underlaid by weak soils, and weak clays which are loaded slowly. Failure develops gradually in the setting due to the high compressibility of these soils. Little to no disturbance is seen at the surface when punching shear occurs, but structures can experience high levels of settlement, as you can see in this video currently. Local shear failure occurs in cohesionless and loose to medium dense soils. This failure mode has a well-defined shear surface directly under the footing, which may or may not be seen at the surface. Local shear failure happens gradually as the footing continues to experience settlement and the movement along the shear plane, as you can see in the video. General shear failure occurs in dense cohesionless soils and undrained cohesive soils. General shear failure is characterized by a well-defined shear plane with a clear disturbances uh, in the soil, surface soils. This type of failure occurs suddenly and can cause significant rotation of the structure, as you can see in this video currently playing.